Video games are expensive and take ages to make, and at the end of all that time and expense you aren't even guaranteed that the game will be any good. Fuck yeah, I'm back baby. Time well spent guys. So there are plenty of games that we get to see in their early stages but that never make it to shop shelves due to being cancelled by their publishers. Sometimes they get rescued like I Am Alive which was cut back into an XBLA game, or True Crime Hong Kong, the cancelled open world undercover cop game which resurfaced as the excellent Sleeping Dogs, but not all games are so lucky. Here are 9 of the most promising sounding games that will never see the light of day. Okay, tell us this doesn't get you excited, a zombie game made by Irrational, the guys behind Bioshock Infinite. The studio pitched it back in 2005 before Left 4 Dead changed the zombie game landscape for good, but couldn't find a publisher willing to take a punt on the undead. How times have changed. God damn it! Incoming! The game would have focused on the survival element of a zombie apocalypse, with you having to face risks to get more supplies, ammunition and people as you build up your group of survivors. What kind of risks? Zombie risks, that's what kind. Irrational's creative director Ken Levine calls it the game Irrational wish they had done. We wish that too, Ken. We wish that too. Made by Deadline Games, who created the gloriously OTT Total Overdose on PS2 and original Xbox, Faith in a 45 was a stylized take on Bonnie and Clyde style outlaws during the Great Depression. First announced in 2008, you were to play in co-op as Luke and Ruby, a bank robbing couple on a crime spree across the western US who lock horns with a dastardly oil baron. The game seemed to have everything going for it, a unique setting, an arresting visual style and a developer with a pedigree in open world shooters. Seriously, Total Overdose was great. So it's heartbreaking that the game was eventually binned when Deadline couldn't find a publisher to bite. By 2009, Deadline Games had filed for bankruptcy and their final released game was Watchmen The End Is Nigh for XBLA, which, now that we think about it, yeah, that might actually just be karma. There have been Pirates of the Caribbean video games, but with the exception of the fun LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, they've all been uninspired tie-in affairs. Pirates of the Caribbean Armada of the Damned looked set to change that, with an open-world pirate adventure with a new storyline, new characters and a morality system that would see your buccaneer becoming legendary or dreaded depending on their actions. You played James Sterling, a pirate who was so fearsome that he uh, managed to get himself killed on his first ever voyage. I didn't choose death. If anything, death chose me. Luckily he was revived by supernatural forces and given a second chance, which he used to smash people over the head with anchors and battle supernatural curses and sea monsters. Unfortunately, the game was cancelled by Disney in late 2010, leaving us without an open world pirate action game to play. Well, until Assassin's Creed 4 shows up, don't see anyone cancelling that. France is collapsing under the weight of its own government. In Paris's ghettos, anarchy. You might not know Viktor Antonov by name, but you certainly know his work. He's an art director and generally considered to be the mind behind the unique visual style of Half-Life 2's City 17, Dishonored's Dunwall, and Redneck Rampage's Hickston, Arkansas. Hold on to your butt. Maybe let that one slip off the bottom of the CV, Victor. But before Dishonored, Arcane Studios was working on a game called The Crossing, set in an alternate Paris where the Knights Templar are still around, rocking 14th century fashion. Nice spoilers, mate. It was designed to be both single and multiplayer at the same time in what we presume would be the FPS equivalent of Test Drive Unlimited, though Arcane insisted on trying to coin the phrase crossplayer. Stop that, game developers. You can tell even from this footage that the game didn't so much die as evolve into Dishonored. Still, it pains us that there's a Viktor Antonov designed, medieval inspired alternate Paris sitting on a hard drive somewhere that we'll never get to explore. <laughs> Hi Claire, you okay? Yes, okay, it's easy to make fun of Milo and Kate for being a creepy as hell small boy simulator, but the technology that it was a proof of concept for was genuinely exciting. Project Milo, as it was also known, utilised the Kinect sensor to interact with players by recognising their facial features and the tone of their voice. You? Nervous? I don't believe it. You could also draw pictures for Milo that would get integrated into the game, a feature that definitely wouldn't be abused by people at all. There we go. What do you think? That's disgusting, Claire. You should be ashamed of yourself. 
Milo and Cade was a glimpse at a video game that you could develop a genuine emotional attachment to. Some of the technology went on to be used in Fable the Journey, but it seems that Milo was just a bit too ambitious for its own good. Santos, Pope and DJ went in at 0900, then we lost contact. Maybe just building interference, but maybe not. Locate the while you're at it. See if you can find out where these things are coming from. Back when games based on the Aliens franchise seemed like a great idea, Sega hired Obsidian, the guys behind Fallout New Vegas and Knights of the Old Republic 2, to make Aliens Crucible. Designed to be an action RPG set within the Aliens universe, all the ingredients were in place for this to basically be Mass Effect set in the Aliens universe. Alright, alright, Alpha Protocol set in the Aliens universe, we're not blind. We're not sure if it was based on this unflattering early footage, or the fact that over at Gearbox, Aliens Colonial Marines was the game development equivalent of a slow-motion train wreck, but the game was publicly canned in 2009. Games usually get cancelled for a reason, but we maintain that with that team and that license, something brilliant, if a little ugly, could have been born. Still, I guess we were spared from having to listen to this budget Vince Vaughn. That didn't sound good. No shit, do something about it. Well, like what? Push the button faster? Small mercies. Get a deep breath. It'll be the last fresh air you'll get for a while. Cargo main cleared for descent to level 1313. Star Wars 1313 was set between the two current Star Wars trilogies and was going to have you play as a newbie bounty hunter descending the Warren-like levels underneath Coruscant to level 1313, a whole city made up of the bad part of town, full of guttering neon, sleazy holograms and shady characters on every corner. From the gameplay demos released by LucasArts, 1313 was going to be a split between what they called cover-based agile combat and heart-in-mouth platforming. The team working on the game included staff from ILM, Lucasfilm Animation and Skywalker Sound and it both looked and sounded amazing. We were definitely up for a darker, more mature story set in the Star Wars universe, so we were hugely disappointed when our old friends Disney stepped in and cancelled the project after their purchase of Lucasfilm. Still, we've always got Kinect Star Wars, right? Oh god, why? As this rare color footage shows, these thugs are no match for the pugilistic pounding of our intrepid hero. While we're on the subject of LucasArts, how about this, their cancelled Indiana Jones project? The game was set to be a globe-trotting action adventure following the adventures of Dr. Jones as he threw a guy into a car over and over again. Look how no two reactions are ever the same! Euphoria gives you that true next-generation experience! Leave him Indies, had enough. Okay, it was a tech demo for the new at the time Euphoria animation engine, but this was due to be the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 version of the game that came to other platforms as the scaled back Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. Sadly, it was cancelled due to constant delays. Even if it was just a game where Indy stood in an alley in Chinatown beating the tar out of an endless procession of dudes, we'd still have played the hell out of it. It's Indiana Jones, come on. I know what you're thinking, punk. You're thinking did he fire six shots or only five? And to tell you the truth, I forgot myself and all this excitement. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Finally, we have Dirty Harry, the video game. If you haven't seen Dirty Harry, it's a movie where Clint Eastwood goes around squinting, being a jerk to people, and then shooting them. This was going to be the video game equivalent of that. I know, right? Who the hell would cancel that? Around here. Ah! Jeez, you my nose. Somebody call the police. And the police. The game would also feature an open-world 1970s San Francisco to explore, a serial killer for you to track down, and plenty of crooks for you to growl things about magnums at. Internal problems at the studio is the reason Warner gave for canning the game. I don't know guys, I'd be careful if I were you. Pissing off Clint Eastwood doesn't seem like the best idea. Okay, there we have nine great-looking games that will sadly never see the light of day. Which one did you most like the look of? Any we didn't include that you'd have loved to see get a release? Let us know in the comments and subscribe for more from Outside Xbox.